popularity. Uh, I'm going to download here the Steam skin, and Steam is a popular game download client uh, from Valve. Um, and actually, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to download the, the file. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with downloading software from websites. Uh, the important thing to note is that the download files are in RAR format. So that is an archive format similar to zip. You'll need a special piece of software to open these. Um, you can get one like WinRAR, it's W-I-N-R-A-R, uh, that can be downloaded simply by Googling WinRAR. So here I'm going to close uh, the browser. And as you can see here, the archive uh, for the Steam skin is now on my desktop. Uh, if I were to double click on that, it would open up the archive and allow me to extract the files, which I've done here. They're now on my desktop as a folder. So this is the folder I'm going to open. This is the Steam skin folder. And the key thing that I want to draw your attention to right now is the README file. So I'm going to double click on the README file. Most of the skins have a README file that explain um, where you should copy the files for the skin into your TeamSpeak 3 directory as well as um, how to enable the skin. So here you can see we're gonna to have to select a specific style and select a specific theme and a specific icon pack. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up my TeamSpeak 3 client folder. As you can see here, I'm in my program files and my TeamSpeak 3 client, and that may be different for you uh, depending on how you install the client. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to follow the instructions and I'm going to copy these appropriate folders. So here we have the Steam UI folder. And I'm going to put that over here in the graphics folder. Continue. And now I'm going to go to the styles. And as you can see here, there are two, actually two things to copy. There's the Steam UI folder, as well as this QSS file, which is specific to TeamSpeak 3 skins. So here I'm going to scroll down a little bit to my styles folder. And I'm going to copy these over to the styles. And continue. So that's all I need to do. My skin is now installed. And as you can see again, I simply need to go and select the style, the theme, and the icon pack. So we're going to open up the TeamSpeak 3 client. Um, all of the customization settings are really available under the settings and options menu. So I'm going to select that. As you can see here on the left, there are a whole lot of options that you can specify to customize the TeamSpeak 3 client. Um, we're in the design category right now. And as you can see again, there are three elements that we need to change as per the instructions provided by the theme author. So I'm actually going to close this now. I'm just going to remember this style, which is plastique. So here I'm going to come down to plastique. And then I can select the theme, which is the Steam UI. And I can select the default, the icon pack, which is Steam UI. And when I click the apply button, right, the theme is immediately applied. Um, so you can see now that the fonts have changed, look and feel and color and everything else. When I close this settings window, you can see that it has, um, you know, some of the look and feel of the Steam client, if you're familiar with that. Um, I'll actually go ahead and connect to a server. So now you can actually see as well over here that there's a lot of, again, a lot of resemblances to the Steam client. So um, that is as simple as it is for skinning. So as you can see, my client is now fully skinned. So before we go on to talk about some of the other customization options, we want to talk a little bit about the automated add-on installer system that's included in the TeamSpeak 3 client. As we just demonstrated, it was a very manual process to install the new skin. You extracted files from the archive you downloaded, you dragged and you know, or copied those into your TeamSpeak 3 client installation directory on your computer. And although not very complicated, it's still a manual process. The new TeamSpeak 3 client also includes an automated add-on installation system. And this is whereby you click on a link on a web page, such as from an add-on page on the TeamSpeak 3 website, and it will automatically prompt you to launch the TeamSpeak 3 add-on installer system, whereby all of the files are placed automatically into their correct directories, and you won't have to do anything. So we want to demonstrate that with a sound pack add-on, so I am going to open up the TeamSpeak 3 website again. And as you can see here, I am already on the page of the add-on that I want. It's a sound pack specifically, the uh, John St. John Duke sound pack. It's very popular because, you know, he's actually the voice of Duke Nukem. So it's uh, pretty awesome. That'll be really cool 
to have some Duke Nukem sounds in our TeamSpeak 3 client. But as you can see here, all that I need to do is click this link over here. So it's underneath all of the add-on details. And when I click that, it will get downloaded by my browser, which will automatically prompt me to open it with the TeamSpeak 3 add-on. So I'm going to click OK, and that's going to download that, make sure it's OK. I'm going to click the Yes button to continue, and now you'll see that a TeamSpeak 3 add-on installer information pop-up has appeared, which provides all of the information about the add-on that I'm trying to install. So it's a sound pack, it's John St. John, it gives you the author and version and everything, and it also tells you where the add-on will be installed. So the really cool part about this is all I need to do is click the install button, and now that successfully is installed to my TeamSpeak 3 client. So all that's left for me to do is to go into the settings and options again and select that sound pack as my default sounds for my client. So let's talk about some of the other things that we can set. Um, one of the options, again, under the settings options is the advanced permissions. Uh, this is under the application category. So the advanced permission system, right, I'm going to uncheck the box, sorry, uh, allows you to gain more granular control over the way permissions are governed within the client. Now, this tutorial is not going to cover that, uh, but what I want to show you is you'll notice here under permissions that there are only really sort of four options. But if I go and I check the box for advanced permission system, I hit apply, I click OK, you can see now that there are a lot more permissions. There's actually now channel group permissions as well as um, client permissions and channel permissions. There's just more options for you to set permissions. Uh, the next thing we're going to cover is the download folder. So again, under the settings and options. Now, uh, TeamSpeak 3 is really cool. It allows you, know, you to share files with other chatters when you're in specific channels. Uh, you know, this could be really cool if you've taken a great screenshot of a game and you want to pass it around. Uh, TeamSpeak 3 saves those, um, those files in a specific location. Uh, that's specified here in the downloads category. Um, as you can see, there's a default download location. I can actually um, have it prompt me each time. So that's a great way if you've got an organization method, uh, maybe for different channels, maybe you're in different games and uh, you want to keep all the screen captures or all the files separate. Uh, so you can prompt each time someone shares a file with you to download, or you can just change the default location by clicking the change button and browsing to the appropriate folder that you want. I'm going to click apply there. Again, um, each time you make a change in one of these categories, um, you need to click the apply button, or um, if you change a category, TeamSpeak 3 Client will prompt you to apply the changes or discard them. So let's look at another customization option, which is security. So I'm going to click on the security category here. Now, you may be involved in a number of secure channels um, you know, across different servers. And for each of those, you will, of course, need a different password. Um, now, that can get quite unmanageable if you're in a lot of these uh, secure channels. So the TeamSpeak 3 client provides you an option to have it remember the channel passwords. So here I'm going to check that box. And you'll see here this warning that's popped up, and it simply states that if you're using TeamSpeak 3 Client on a shared computer, this is probably not a best practice to save your secure channel passwords. Obviously, anybody using the computer could fire up TeamSpeak 3, log into your channels, and uh, you know, misrepresent you. So if, again, if this is your personal computer, this is not a problem. Uh, but again, the warning here is just to make you understand um, what, you know, what exactly it means to save those passwords. Of course, you can come in also at any time and click the Clear Channel Passwords button. This will remove all of your stored channels. Sorry, just the stored channel passwords. Um, and, you know, a great way to clear out the system if you, if you want to. So I'm going to click the Apply button again. Now, the last thing, uh, the next to last thing that we're going to cover here is the menu bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this out. And I'm going to right-click on the menu. And as you can see in this toolbar here, there's an option for customizing the toolbar. So I'm going to select that. And as you'll see, there's lots of icons here, you know, as well as separators. And over here on the left in my customized toolbar window, there's a whole lot of 
TeamSpeak 3 client features that I can add to the toolbar. So this really comes down to what features you tend to use a lot, um, what would you like to see, you know, to be able to easily click on and not have to go to the menu system to find it. So to add something, uh, you know, I'll just add, I'll add basically a connect option. I'm going to select that and I'm going to click the arrow here, which will bring it over. And you can see now it's immediately available on the toolbar. Now, even on this side, I can adjust where these are. So I'm actually going to move this connect. And you can see it moving up at the top. It's moving past separators. It's moving past other icons. I'm going to get it all the way to the front. So now I have my connect icon over here. I'm actually going to add a separator. So again, you can see there that the line appears at the end. Um, I'm going to move that up the list because I want to keep that separated. And now you can see that my newly added connect icon is separated from the rest of my icons. Um, this is a really great feature to enable you to customize the way the client works um, and sort of what features are available to you, you know, that are you know, just easily clickable icons. Um, you can always reset to the defaults by clicking the reset to defaults button. Um, so if you've got a bunch of icons up there and you just kind of want to start from scratch, that's a, that's a great way to do it. Um, so the last thing we want to cover is under settings and options. And again, back to, uh, back to the design, right? So there are, um, again, a lot of options here, um, for how you can really change the look and feel. So not only here can you skin it, right? but you can sort clients by channels. Um, you can display URLs and menus. You can modify the transparency. So for example, you may want a more transparent client and transparency really would just mean that, you know, uh, perhaps I want to overlay this on my game um, and I want to be able to type on it, but I want to be able to see, you know, the game underneath as well. So again, TeamSpeak 3 provides a really robust set of uh, design, look and feel.